And we are live. This is the Dr. Nick's Amazing Man Stuff YouTube channel. This live stream in particular is the doctor's orders every Tuesday, 1 p.m. Eastern, small exception. Next week, you guys will get all the posts and it'll be on the video and everything. We're going to be live at 9 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday next week. I will be remote. I think Nick will be here. Same location? Um, Probably. Oh, no, or at home. We might be at home. I don't yeah. know. We might both be remote. Ooh, you guys might have a couple new views next ooh, week. Ooh, so. ooh. <laughs> Note that 9 p.m. Eastern next week. It'll be on the thumbnail. It'll be scheduled. It'll be on socials. Uh, you guys will get all the reminders in the world. But we're going to be here. We don't miss. This is going to be a fun show, you guys. But first, I got to introduce myself. My name is Dan. I'm the co-host of this show here. And the other co-host is not a medical doctor. Calm down, please. Stop sending him those pictures. Listen, <laughs> we need to talk about the photos. All Thank right? you. Shirts on, no feet. We've been over this. You you did not say pants though, so leaving that uh, <laughs> leaving that <laughs> open ended there. But so also not notice the signs at stores. They say no shirt, no shoes, no service. They also say nothing about pants. I never, literally, never once thought about that. I have. I yeah. Yep, that doesn't surprise me. That does not mm -hmm. surprise me. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the doctor of time and space. The doctor, all right, would you say you wear pants more often than shorts or shorts more often than pants? I mean, it, it really depends. You know, I live in a terrible climate where it's cold more than it's not, so I wear mm. pants a lot. But ah, anytime okay. it is over, I'd say 60 degrees, 58 degrees, I'm like, give me the shorts. Mm, yeah oh yeah 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 no there's it's a 40 plus is usually shorts for me yeah i've been getting closer to like the 50 plus mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah it really just becomes a thing yeah. and uh ricardo thank you for asking i actually did sleep last night i didn't have the easiest time falling asleep but once i did i slept great and i'm feeling good today you guys i don't think i'm i'm fully clear out of the the weather but i am much 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 better than than i was yesterday so thank you, you guys for all better. the yeah, thank you. Thank you for all the, the love and support out there. We're going to have a great show today. And uh, I don't know if I finished that, but please welcome the doctor himself of time and space, Mr. Nick. <sighs> Nick, how are you today? Uh, I'm doing good. <clears throat> I, I did I did not have a problem falling asleep yesterday. <laughs> I, uh, we, we wrapped up the stream with you, and I think I was blissfully unaware of existence about... 15 20 minutes later so that's amazing i was good slept good uh had a, had a crazy day yesterday so i was just kind of honestly I was, I was going like i mean i think yesterday was like a an 18 hour long day i think i started at around six ended at around midnight slept for seven hours and here i am again so Woo, it's kind of well whoop. hopefully the feedback from the amazing people that are in our community and in the chat that was brought to dr nicks last oh. night was was fuel and worth it i thought it, it was pretty special personally it was absolutely like it's one of those things where i was telling jill too like just to get that kind of feedback and validation about the brand as a whole and just see the audience grow. I mean, you look back to the first commands corner we did, right? And it's like, hey, what's everyone got in beard? And it was like, you know, a bunch of other stuff, maybe one from us, people wearing our stuff. And then the second one, you know, there was more. And then, you know, you fast forward now, you know, a year, some odd, you know, months later. Yeah. And it was just like everyone made sure that they were wearing their Dr. Nixon beard because they knew we were on the stream with you last night. And just the feedback of, I mean, like I told you, it's like the the world's coolest focus group in the world because yeah, we get I to learn that. and hear from people like what we're doing right, like what stands out. And so therefore, you know, we know kind of what we need to do more of. Um, and it's just incredibly validating. Like we could have gone all of last night with not one sale coming even on, on the promotion. And I would have considered last night, even with those outrageous giveaways, completely worth it because it's not about the money. It's not about the sales. Like those for me are to see how our community is growing and to see what people are saying about us and just gets a cool chance that outside of this channel to talk about, you know, an audience that enjoys our products. I mean, it's just, it's really, really cool to see. It really is. It's so fun. And yes, Channing says, I hear this is where the hot tub mosh party starts. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, so this is, so we need to definitely tell the, the, the hot tub mosh pit story. So Hit I'm, I'm, I am definitely all over uh, tackling that one. 
All right, right. what you got? Yeah. Where, where is that? Was it a cruise? Oh, we're just going to do that now. Okay, yeah. cool. Let's do it now. Yep. So, like, it was a cruise. So, it was a cruise called 70,000 Tons of Metal. <clears throat> it was <laughs> uh, back, this was probably hmm, circa 2016 ish. And um, so, you know, it, it was a really cool, it's a cool event. Um, and uh, it, it basically, they construct the world's largest open air stage that is ever constructed on a, on a ship um, every year. It, they beat themselves a little every year and they still hold the record. And what they do to do it is the top deck on a cruise ship, you know, they have like the big main pool. Um, what they do is they put a big, you know, false floor over the top of that pool and then the supports that you see, like, you know, you go to like a, um, like a, like a concert that's like an outdoor concert in a big area, like a big grassy area, like maybe at a festival, or maybe you see a big um, stage at like a, when they set them up inside of baseball stadiums, you know, where it's like big ass raised stage. And then you got those big towers for like the lighting and all the rigging and all that. Well, what they do to stabilize this whole thing is there's the there's the floor that goes over the pool and then all of those supports go through that floor down to the bottom of the pool where they're all weighted with this big huge weighting system to make it so it won't tip with the movement of the boat obviously but anyway on this boat there's this big outdoor stage up top and there's three other stages built in the different venues in the cruise ship i mean there was you know there's close to 10,000 people um there's 120 concerts in 5 days so you basically have, you know, I think it's 60, 70 bands. They each play two shows. So 120 to 140 concerts starts at nine in the morning, ends at three in the morning every night. International waters. It's really cool. So think about the pool set up on a cruise ship, right? You got the pool, right? And you got the bar. And what's in between the pool and the bar? Usually uh, in like a hotel or a cruise ship. It's like multiple hot tubs. And this cruise ship was no different. So what you had here was stage, mosh pit area, dance floor, hot tubs, then bar area. So as you can imagine, those hot tubs were filled um, during the shows because you can see the show from the hot tub. So you got open Caribbean air, you got heavy metal, you got mosh pit, then you have hot tub. So all of a sudden, Cannibal Corpse comes on people start going nuts in the mosh pit and each of the four hot tubs, people just start running in circles in the hot tub. And it's creating like a vortex at this point. And they're like pushing people down. People are falling in the water, getting pulled back out by people. Then, you know, it gets a little later, they keep going and they find that the, <laughs> these monsters in the hot tub, me included, uh, <laughs> old of the beer buckets that they were delivering like coronas to people's tables and hot tubs in and we start scooping buckets of water and throwing it all over the people in the mosh pit so now the mosh pit floor is wet all the people out there are soaked and we're just dousing them laughing our heads off covering all these people in in water so i noticed that there's some security guys like gathering near the bar area kind of looking over at the hot tub and uh i get out and i go over to grab a beer and i kind of sit there and listen and I'm like, okay, this is finally when we tip it over. This is when we finally get in trouble on this damn boat. Like, they haven't yelled at us for anything. 8,000 drunk metalheads haven't gotten in trouble once. I'm like, now, here it comes. And I, and I get closer so I can hear them. And, they're, and I hear the main manager guy going, no, no, no. Well, don't, no, don't take, well, don't stop delivering beer to them. Just do it without the buckets because they're <laughs> using them to throw the water. So just don't bring them more buckets. Like, you don't need to take those away. And, and definitely keep bringing them beer in the hot tub, but just... Just carry them in your arms. Don't bring them any more buckets. It's Amazing. Like, that was the extent of our trouble we got in on that boat was still get beer, still have buckets. Just we don't get more of them. Uh, yeah. But yeah. There, was, there was people getting out, belly flopping into the center of the hot tubs, like in the middle <laughs> of the hot tub mosh pit. Like, oh, it was a mess. All right. One mosh pit question before we bring in our uh, guest interview today. <laughs> and my man, OG Fitzroy says... I think I'd get into a fight in a mosh pit. Now, I'm someone who does not frequent a mosh pit either. Break down the the fighting like culture, or is does it? How does it not happen? Does it happen? What what's the fighting aspect? Very, very, very rarely, and it's really, really frowned upon. So the um, 
the the metal community it, it's all about like a healthy release of aggression right like the more aggressive the music the more relaxing it should be to you because you're like channeling your internal frustrations through what you're hearing and a mosh pit is an extension of that but the funny thing is is there is mosh pit camaraderie like and there is a definitely a code of ethics like when you run up to somebody and you like shove them as hard as you can you catch them off balance and they're like oh man and they're like bang into somebody and they come back the next time you encounter that guy, he's going to grab your hand, he's going to give you a hug, and he's going to throw you against somebody else, and you're going to keep on going. Like, And if the person that throws you, all of a sudden you fall down, the first thing you see is his hand reaching out to grab you off the floor, pull you back up, pat you on the back, and push you into somebody else and keep going. Hmm. Like. The, when when someone when someone runs into you or you run into somebody else, it's not the feeling of like that person's being aggressive to me. It's I'm being aggressive with the music, and you are here for the same reason, right? So it's a it, it's not like um, you don't feel any confrontation in a mosh pit. You feel like a a mutual release of energy and frustration and aggression. Um, like they say, vulgar release, a vulgar display of power, right? It's like the, just like Pantera said, I mean, it's, it's, that's what it is. But I mean, there is, it, you have never seen so many people bend over to pick somebody up as someone who falls down in a mosh pit that was pushed down by someone intentionally. Hmm. That's great. That's I mean, great. I like that. It really is very different than a lot of people think you got to experience right. it. Yeah. Right. All right, guys. Love that. And with that said, we're going to get into an interview today. This is a friend of mine. This is a professional barber. This is a business owner. This is a U.S. military veteran. And we're going to get to know him and all the different angles of his interesting personality in life. And I'm so excited that he agreed to do this show today so you guys can kind of get to know them and for Nick to get to know him because uh, this is one of the guys where when I met him first time, like we had been chatting online and when we met and we started talking, it was like immediately, okay, like, yes, we have the same wavelength. We are brothers. Like we have the same kind of exact way me and Nick kicked it off the first time we really talked. And it's just a, a special person, a, a really beautiful mindset. And so if you guys don't mind, I'm going to link his Instagram in the chat. I have also pinned his YouTube channel at the top. Both of those are 100% free. If you guys want to go support a great person, uh, it doesn't cost you anything. Just give them a follow on both of those locations here. So if you don't mind, please Help me welcome my friend, Sean James, a.k.a. Mr. Veteran Cuts. <sighs> Sean, how you doing, my man? Ah, I'm good. I'm good. How about y'all? Good, 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 good. Good, man. Welcome. Yeah, Thank we're you. excited Thank to you. chat. So, Sean, first thing, where are you uh, Where are you coming from today? Where do you Where do you live? Any of just like the, the basic info that people can get to know you uh, right off the jump like today? Right now, I'm coming live from the game slash work slash sweat and tears room all the way till three o'clock in the morning. But I'm from Columbus, Ohio. I was born and raised here. Uh, did some military time from 2011, got out 2017. So what was that about like six years or whatever so? And have a couple deployments, got a couple scars learned some things, got some experiences, brought them from the military here. And after serving there, serving with hair. Oh, dang. Oh, look at that. I like that. Have you used that before? I think nope. so. That's good. <laughs> that line, write that one down. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that one's good. <laughs> and uh, and I know, Sean, we have a, a common uh, mutual interest in soccer, specifically the Columbus crew. And, Sean, tell me about your – oh, you, man this isn't this year's yet right that's beautiful and yes they are the reigning defending mls champions sean and i were both at that game but sean yeah. tell the quick story of your first experience watching soccer <laughs> yeah so the first time i ever watched soccer like actually watched it and absorbed it yep was in afghanistan mm. like that was the first experience because over here like what 2010 and below no one really knew about soccer like we knew of it but we thought it was just a sport that people from overseas played here because they weren't good enough to play over there like their g league so right. that's why <laughs> i not necessarily thought it was 
But when we were over there, every time I would ask, like, hey, you guys want to play football? You want to play basketball? They would be like, no, you're too big. I'm like, all right, cool. What do you want to play? They're like, football. And I'm like, okay, maybe they're not understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> so when we go out there, we'd be kicking the ball. And I found it was, like, very fun and entertaining. And that was, like, I want to say 2014 during my deployment because when I was there, oh, thank you. Thank you for the support. And after I was there, everyone was like, you're actually good at this. I'm like, uh, I don't know. But then it got introduced to me after we was on the field on FIFA, on the sticks. Mm. And we don't got no time to play video games. So as I started playing that, Germany won the World Cup that year. And then that's why I became a German fan for the national team because the German soldiers, everyone all embraced me. They taught me about the sport. And I was like, this is way better than what we have in the U.S. And then when I came back, I was like, hey, no one even cares about this. Why? Right. So then I, I just got so indulged in it because I was like, yo, this fan base is so big. Everybody needs a haircut because they look crazy running out here. So I was like, why not cut the whole fan base in the team? And after that, hey, we're here now. Two rings later and about, what, 50 professional players in the cheering out. Man, that is so dang cool. And uh, I'm, was it like going and you went to a game when you were over there, right? Mm -hmm. Was it like culture shock because it's so different than our sport culture? It's so massive. So over there I did, in Germany, I did with um, Barissa Dormund. That's my favorite team. So nice. when I was in there, like when I say, how do you explain this? <laughs> you, ever, you, ever, you ever got on a video game or something that you liked and you're like, yo, I'm home. Like, this is fun. Like, I'm going to play this until the end of the day. Like, you remember when you first opened Super Mario? And he was like, yo, this game is fire. Right. Yeah. That was my eyes when I seen Barissa Dormont. Because these fools, they had fire in the stands. I'm like, yo, somebody's going to jail today. Like, why Why is this going down? They're like, nah, this is how we cheer. Where are you from? I'm like, America. And they're like, oh, y'all, y'all's a baby league. This is the big leagues. So I'm seeing people pull off pyros and set them on fire. And note. Everyone in that stadium is in a cage. I didn't understand why they were in a cage. So if you look up Arisa Dormont and you look at that stadium, they're in a cage. They're in a cage because they will clear those stands and go out there and celebrate and act <laughs> like that. That's how passionate it, it is, the game over there. Like that, like the movie, uh, what was it, Hooligans? Yeah, Green Street Hooligans, one of my favorites. That is literally, like if you as an American go see a game over there, it is to that level. You're just like, yeah, see, there you go. There you go. That right there. That is the amount of what the heck is going on. Because you feel like you're in prison. But there's a reason why. Because they are so passionate. That's unreal. Nick, let that sink in. And Nick Dude. is not a sports guy. But that's, not an NFL game. Like, that's not an NFL game or a basketball game. Right. And then the players go jump up and celebrate and they start shaking the cage and going crazy. Dude, that's awesome. I mean, I've seen footage of those and I'm like, well, I'd, I'd, I'd definitely go to that. Like, that looks good. Like, sign me up. <laughs> oh, remember how you were talking about mosh pits earlier? Yeah. yeah. There, yeah you there you go. It's a there slide you full of one. But you wear another jersey in there? Oh, my yeah. God. That's gonna, the, that's gonna be the wrong kind of mosh pit. <laughs> yeah, that's the wrong mosh pit. Yeah, yeah right. You don't want that one. Nope. Yep, and if anybody has not watched Green Street Hooligans, Watch it's it. uh, Elijah Wood. There's there's a couple of other names in there. It's essentially following the fans, like almost like gangs without weapons that clash with the other team's fans, and they use brick like without guns. I say, say they use bricks, they use like pipes, and they meet up. And man, it's it's a squabble. Like they they go, and it's real. But they they really do that over there. So like yeah, like yeah. I've seen like them and Byron. Oh, they do not get along at all. Like, oh, I bet, I bet that's but amazing. The culture, the culture is so deep there, though. Because like in America, Sunday happens. You can see people walking around enjoying football games. When you have a game over there, everything stops. Like there's cats and window sills watching games. There's old ladies walking down the street with the jerseys on. Like it, it's crazy. Like the, the amount of support there is just wild. I've yeah, seen, and, uh, I've seen so much footage of like the trains and like stuff in like the public transportation system, like in the madness that ensues there after after some of those games. Like, you you know you got to be on top of your game to, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, to swivel. Top of your game, go out there. 
yeah, this is no. very organized over there too. Like, like right. their transit and like um, trains, and all, like it, it's so organized. It's like a chaotic, um, it's a chaotic, concentrated, like organized. Yeah. Like, for yeah. us, we would see it and we'd be like, "Yo, that's crazy!" Right? But where's the riot police? And they're like, "No, it's organized chaos. We're good. We actually we're fine." Yeah. Like if we've seen that, oh, I'm talking about Billy Cubs, tear gas, somebody's getting yeah. dragged off. They they might even have the Mercedes vans out there. Yep. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Now here's a good uh, a timely question. So you go over, you're in the military, you fall in love with soccer, you come back here. Were you into hair care and barber and cutting before your service? If not, how'd you fall into it or how'd you get back to it? Uh Bef- like before I did military work, I was 100% a jock, like athlete, like video gamer. But I wasn't like a jock that was like rude to people or anything. I was that guy that I would walk over to like the table full of people that was playing Dungeons and Dragons or something or, or, or more so playing Pokemon. And I'm like, who got the Charizard? Yeah. And then, Whoa, how do you know about this? I'm like, I know everything. I- I'll pull out my Pokemon. And they're like, what? So before like all of that like I, I wasn't really in the hair like I, I didn't I never had hair like this or anything like my hair was like completely low I had a low cut fade military hair but then after I got out I grew it and then like my hair my hair isn't like normal like um like wavy hair like like you see like black people's hair like yeah. the wave and all that my hair is like super curly like it was like a jerry curl like people think <laughs> I'm Dominican or Puerto Rican or something I'm like <laughs> Sure. I, I, yeah, you want to be Dominican today? I'll be Dominican. But nice. it's like it's like a it's like Bruno, Bruno Mars is here. So like oh, whenever okay. he sees it, they're like, what the heck? But like I never really cut hair. Like I would cut hair like for my friends because they knew I could draw, and I just looked at it as drawing. But then when I came back from serving when we were overseas, I would cut hair sometimes when we really needed it because it was either me or like the lady from like Dutch or Sweden that was like jacking you up, and it's like, yo, we rather you do it. And like I never really like thought of it as a career, but I was like, yeah. When I came back, everyone seen that I cut so much hair. I was like, yo, you gotta go cut hair. And then I was like, all right, cool. That's crazy, and that's how the best things happen. And uh, my buddy Greg, who we've had on this show as well, I think you, I sent you that episode, Sean. He said I hated shaving all the time. That's why a lot of veterans say screw it and grow their beard and hair out. And it's that uh, what we call a freedom beard. I don't, yep. this, is my, this is my freedom beard. This is about seven years worth. So, <laughs> hey. I can, like, all my hair does with beard growth is gets fuller. Yeah. So, like, my, like, and I always try to tell people, like, when they come in the shop, like, there'll be guys that have beards like mine. I'm like, you don't have a freedom beard, man. Like, no matter what you do, it's not going to change. And they're like, but I want one. And I'm like, it's okay. You have to embrace the beard that you're given. Some people are bigger than others, and some people aren't. <laughs> so, you just yep. gotta be happy with what you got. That's it, man. And you know, the freedom beard thing is such a thing too, because it's like it's like a badge of honor. It shows that you it shows that you're out and it shows that you're doing what you want. And you know, the all the way down to the grooming routine. It, it, it's funny too. I mean, that's such a it's such a small kind of a thing, but it's such a you know, it is. It it, it like reminds you every day that like you did what you had to do, you're done, you can do what you want, you know. Yeah, see that that look, I got my freedom locks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So I did this for this. Hey, yeah, and man. it works. The especially there's a time with the- in my life where I would have traded this for that too. I mean, it's like come on. I don't, I don't have the freedom locks. I, I did. They're they're only in one. They're only one place. It goes straight down through my scalp and out of my face. I would I would give anything just to have like a nice just like Fu Manchu like lumberjack like straight like yeah the handlebar. I'm talking about if I could have that, I would have given. A- darn about hair on top of my head i would just wear that and no shirt all day oh man the grass is always greener yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> so true so so true all right and staying on that topic i want to ping pong back and forth with me and nick giving you a barber frustration that we experience that we hear about from beardsmen and then i want to get your take on it from the barber side of view uh full disclosure sean and i have talked about some of these things previously he didn't know the questions were coming today though and so just give like your your reaction to it so the first one that that i'm going to hit you with here sean is a lot of guys come back to me devastated after a barber trip because they ask whether it's vague whether it's specific 
they ask for something very small. They'll say, hey, I need a really little trim for an event this weekend. I just want a half an inch off the bottom, or I wanna clean up just the small transparency from the exterior and then ends up the barber takes off two, three inches because they think it looks better because a lot of barbers value clippings on the floor and value like if I just do a little bit, he's not going to think I did my job. And then they take off more, which ends up hurting the, the customer's goals and relationship. Is that something you've heard of? You've seen any thoughts on that? Um, yeah, I, I've experienced it a couple of times, but then I also like I see and I know both sides of the story. Right. So like. Like, say, like, if someone had a beard that was, like, all the way down to where my hair is. But you know, like, how you can see my hair. There's certain hairs that are, like, um, in a mirror. <laughs> so you see, like, there's certain ones that may be shorter than what the actual ends are down here. Yep. Mm -hmm. so when they say, like, it's like that shadow beard. Like, you know, like, you can see the more fuller area, mm -hmm. but also hair that comes out just because it spans out. Yep. Some barbers think that when you say, hey, I just want a little trim, they think that, okay, that means like since the God dang it, since these hairs right here are that trim to where it would be even straight across, boom. And then that's what happens, right? God dang it. Right. That's what it's right so there. hard to figure out which hand you're moving when you're looking in camera, man. It's, <laughs> it's brutal. So like you see how much you would cut off in a dip God dang it, in a difference of doing that. But a lot of people don't like when um my big thing like i would tell people with beards to tell the barber exactly what they want but then it is a hundred percent okay it is a hundred percent okay because if you sit there and say take a comb and say hey i want to go jesus God dang it. i want to go here nothing more nothing less that gives that barber a straight point to chop at because if you go off of like my barber mentality i'm gonna go off of what's the healthier choice mm. Sometimes the healthier choice is not what's required or wanted by the person. Mm. If someone says, I just want this taken off, but then you have all of these right here, which aren't even. To a barber, that's like, oh, my God, I finished a masterpiece that does not have the completion on the what left side of it. I need to finish that to make sure it looks flush and even. If you want something to where it's like, yo, I just want this area taken off, tell them, may I see a comb? Go down and say, right there is where I want to stop at. Can we cut below there and nothing else? They'll do it. Now, if you want to really make that barber feel good, just say, I understand that it may not be the best of what you see out of your eye, mm. but what I require just for what I want for this cut. Because a lot of barbers, like you said, they don't they do not do the more hair on the floor. They go off of what people are going to see. Because when you walk out of that barber chair, you may be 100% pleased with it being right, God dang it, it, it being right here. But then having like these ends that don't meet all the way down, like like this one. Yeah. But as a barber, you're walking advertisement. So if someone sees that unevenness, then they think that people are going to look at it and be like, oh, that's not even that barber doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah. No, man, you you killed it there. And that's why I want these questions is to hear that other side on the perspective. And I love how you're like, hey, I can acknowledge what I want. I can acknowledge. I know the barbers think it's something different, but just not this time. That's beautiful. But then also, beautiful. there's another thing, too. Like if you and I always tell people this, like you're not going to get uh, like how we talked earlier. You're not going to get Dyson quality from Walmart blow dryers. Mm -mm. So if you go to a Walmart where there's multiple blow dryers and you know you got a selection of who might be the best one or who might be the best barber to do it, why do that versus just going to a suite or a professional who is like directed towards making sure that you personally are satisfied versus the shop? He's more focused on you. Why not pay that extra 25 or 30 bucks to have what you want versus sitting there crying for what you lost? Damn. Yeah. That's a, I mean, that's, that's a bar. I mean, there's definitely a value statement there for sure. And I think that's, and I think that's some, one of the things that I hear from people too is, you know, and it's, this isn't really a barber frustration, but I guess you kind of, you know, a little bit keyed on it. So let's go with it. Is that, um, you know, people will say, you know, well, I shaved because, uh, you know, I, I, I was at a sport clips or whatever. And the guy just, you know, totally butchered up my beard. My first question is like, 
well, why are you letting someone at a sport clips touch your beard? Like, what do you expect? <laughs> does that person even have like so far as like even a social media account that's tied to what they do? Like, I'm guessing not. They, they they're probably do something else in, 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 you know, as a hobby and post about that. Like they don't have a Instagram full of, you know, beard trims or haircuts. And so that I think, I mean, you get what you pay for with haircuts, just along with like everything else. I think one of my biggest gripes for barbers that I hear from other people is people just not valuing the fact that there is a marked difference between what you said, like someone at a shop or a chain versus someone like in a suite. And so I guess that's one of the things that, that we'd ask is like, do you ever, as a barber, get people that come in wanting one thing, but they're just, you know, they, they, they gripe about how much they're paying for it? Like, do you ever get that? Or does your clientele know what they're coming in for? They know why they're paying the extra price to get it, and they're happy to do it. So my my clientele, they know what they're going to get. Like, they, they're they going to get the raw, uh, what, Sean-rated content when they sit down. But they also know that even though we might be flying loose at the gums, I'm a hundred percent focused on what they're going to need. So like, if you ever, like, it's funny. So every time someone gets a haircut or something, when you look at the receipt, it says, look good, feel good, get laid at the end of it. So every <laughs> time they leaves, they're like, oh man, I'm look so good. I'm gonna get laid after this. I'm like, that's the point. That's the point. You don't get laid. It's a money back guarantee after 72 hours. What <laughs> 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 the thing is like, why I say that is, is because it creates joy. Like, What's something that everyone likes? Acceptance. What's something that everyone wants? A partner. What's something that everyone needs? Uh, what you call it? Approval. So if you're getting an approval, hopping out the chair, that you're able to accomplish whatever you want. And what's the most craziest thing everyone like? Love. Getting laid. It doesn't matter where you're from. Like nuns probably like getting laid within the restrictions of the Bible. But biological. <laughs> they like you're going to feel happy. But the thing is, is is if you come to me. You know that you may be paying a higher price, but you know that that higher price is going to be met to the standards for you and for being able to look good outside, like a walking billboard. Mm -hmm. But also, you're able to understand. Like I had an issue yesterday. I had a client that said, "Hey, I uh, didn't receive my refund." But at like from me with a sweep, you know that I'm going to take that time to figure it out. So I went into the system. I figured it out. I was like, "Hey, it never charged you. It only charged you for the other amount." He's like, "I didn't see it on there." So I took the time, recorded the screen, got home, and then recorded the screen also and showed him. He's like, oh, man, thank you. He's like, if I did this at any other shop, they would have just argued with me or not even answered the phone. I'm like, dude, that, that's not my thing. Like, my thing is to make sure that when you leave out of here and you go to Walmart or Target or wherever you're at, and they see you and they be like, damn, that haircut or that beard looks good. Like, what? where did you go? You turn around with the utmost, like, I can't wait to tell you. Right, mm -hmm. right. That's and it. that's how you build clientele because when yeah. someone wants to share with you what they have, then it's worth it. Like you're not gonna go out there and be like, "I guess I'll go buy Nike because I've seen it in the in the window." You're gonna buy Nike because you see all the people wearing it. You're like, "Shoot, I put these basketball shoes on. I'm I'm Le LeBron, Kobe, Jordan in these. If I yeah. buy it, I'm gonna feel like this." Every brand and myself also, along with you both. Everyone looks at your community and your brand and what you're able to offer them in the chair, out the chair, whatever you're doing as it relates to them. So a lot of people relate to me that come to the chair as well, because when you're able to relate to someone, you feel more comfortable and at ease with having conversations to figure out saying, hey, like, I, I do want to go here. I right. don't go here. And when you're able to create that comfortness, you can explore new things, hair wise and all other stuff. Man. I, I don't know how you just got so poetic on us, but there was like seven different quotes in there that I'm going to have to clip because those are just beautiful, dude. You crushed that. And you're right. Patrick's right. A walking advertisement. Funny story. There was a player. Uh, some players uh, have their their own barbers that they go to. And I saw one and I was like, hey, Sean, you didn't cut his hair, did you? And he was like, no. And I was like, yeah, I know. I, I, I know you didn't. That's why I brought it up to you. I was that confident in it. And I, I loved that so much because it does right it does make a difference of that advertisement and when you said people are like excited and proud to talk about it i know nick relates to that when people are excited and proud to talk about the products i know it's with you i i talk about your haircuts to people and like at the games i'll be like hey hey that guy right there sean zawatsky my, my guy sean cut his hair literally at the game i was telling this lady behind me i was like that's my buddy he cut his hair right there and it's like it is it's a source of pride and 
Greg right here killed. He mm -hmm. said this all goes back to supporting those who exhibit passion and love for what they do. Regardless of the industry, this creates a community of human connection. Corp America over uh, human connection. Facts. Facts on facts on facts. And, uh, Corp America less than human connection. Yeah, yes. yeah right, right, right. Alligators eating the, the human yeah. connection. So that yeah. means it's bigger. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Human connection is much more important. <laughs> and I actually have a video. It's a sneak peek. I got a video coming on Wednesday that's titled The Fast Food of Beard Products. And I kind of talk oh. about that is it's such a bummer that the cheapest, the easiest, like the most convenient products are always the worst in America. Yeah. Like it's so much always. easier just to go to Lady Jane's down the road to get a haircut. It's so much easier to go to Walmart and grab Old Spice uh, beard products. It's so much easier to do those things. But then it's crap and it's garbage and everyone's like, but it was $10 cheaper. If it's crap, you still wasted that money, you know? Oh, and it's yeah. And you're going to use more of it. Like, that's the thing that really gets me, too, is, like, the chances are if something is a half the price of something else, you're either going to, one, it's going to have half the effect or it's going to have a negative impact or it might work, but you need to use twice as much of it to make it work. And then you're spending the same price anyway, right? Because you're using twice as much stuff to cost half as much. The only thing is you're just now being just wasteful, right? And, and, and you're not using something as quality as you could. Yep. Oh, no. Nope. Or you just pay for that crappy product and then pay, if not double for the product, to fix it or you do it again anyway. So now you've tripled what you spent. <laughs> pay for it and then you got to pay for a correction because it burns you. Like, remember, Old Spice used to burn everybody and that was crazy. Oh, yeah. Dude. Oh, man. So, so true. Okay. As a barber, mm -hmm. other things that, that I have heard do. For me, one of the biggest things, and then you said like physically showing, I'm a big proponent of being as specific as possible because there's so many guys that are uncomfortable or insecure when they go to a barber and they don't feel comfortable. Sh and like you said, you made such a great point. You want to be a connected, then they're easier to say those things. Is it a good idea to bring pictures, whether it's an old picture of a cut they have or a celebrity that has a very similar hair? Is that a good way to, to start that communication as a barber? Do you prefer that? Or is that for some reason not a good idea? Yes and no. Right. That's what I figured. If you could elaborate on that. So, yes, because if it's an actual cut or a beard trim, it makes a lot of sense. But, okay. If you're cutting off to achieve something, yes. Mm. If someone shows me something that's mm. like <laughs> you can't do nothing to like, like if someone you know, has tears that add hair. Yeah, Nick, take yeah, your hat yeah, off. If yeah, Nick yeah. goes in and shows my picture, he's like, "Give me that cut." It's not. <laughs> I got you. I got yeah. You. All right. Yeah. 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 Yes. Because like, I'll get people <laughs> that be like, "I want to get to this beard," and like this beard to be down here, and I'm like, "What the heck?" <laughs> Like I, I'm like I'm. You're literally about to pay me to say you can't get it cut. You gotta grow it. Right. And then there are people that be like they'll have long beards and they'll be like, "Yo, I want to shape it this way." Then yes, that that's that's a hundred percent right. But Perfect. if you have no beard or like or like if I have a beard like this and I show them a picture of you guys and be like that's what I want, I'm gonna be like, "There, how?" Yeah. Step one: stop shaving. How? Leave. Like <laughs> some people will be like, hey, like, does the appointment still cost? And I'm like, yes, it still costs. Like, you chose not to do this. Like, we can do something else to substitute the time, but necessarily when you come to the shop, like I tell everyone, this is how this is how I run it. I, I run my shop and my time and my uh, prices off of the time that I'm doing the cut, not necessarily what I'm doing. Mm. And they're like, well, what do you mean? And I'm like, you can go anywhere and get a haircut. I can cut your hair in 15 minutes if you want. I can cut your hair in 20 minutes. But if I'm going to take 45 minutes, 30 minutes, or an hour, I got to make sure that it makes sense for the time because you're not going to be at work for 72 hours but only get paid $15 because that's what you want to accept. The work has to match the pay. So, like, when I tell people also, like, if you're going to go in and you're going to tell someone, Hey, I want to grow my beard. That may be something you need to just ask the barber or the stylist or whoever it may be. Do you have a consultation fee? And all this stuff sounds ridiculous, but after like seven years of cutting hair, I would rather someone be like, Hey, 
can I stop in and have a consultation with you? And, I, and me, most of the time, I'm like, hey, I might not have enough time. But if they're like, yo, I'll pay the consultation for you, which is like five, ten dollars. And we can sit down for this five, ten minutes, a dollar a minute to understand what's the best uh, route to go to achieve what they want to get. Because some people be like, yo, I want to get a taper haircut. And I'm like, and, and, and book a freaking beard trim. And I'm like, why would you book a beard trim for a taper haircut? And you're asking me for advice, but you don't want to get the taper or the beard trim. You want to get a haircut. Now you just threw your whole time off and you oh. wasted dollars because I can't do any of that within 15 minutes. Right, right. Interesting. All right, Nick, do you have one more barber situation frustration for Sean? You know, I was going to, I guess I was going to ask about, about photos, but I guess what I'll, I'll do instead is like, I mean, how, I guess what the challenge is that I hear most from people, and it's the same thing that Dan brought up in the beginning is, is I wanted to trim and they took too much off. And, and you say the best way to do it is to kind of mark off with a comb or something like that. But like in the, um, I guess on the other side of that, you probably have people where they, they ask you, right? They don't have a photo. They know they don't like the way they look. This is actually a good question. Okay. So if someone knows they don't like the way their beard looks, mm. right? It's wiry. Maybe, maybe they got something else going on. It's growing in a direction they don't like, right? How should someone approach you to get you know, if they literally want to say like dealer's choice, I'll take the chef's menu. You know, it's I, I trust your opinion. Love that. You know, that kind of thing. Obviously, that's not ideal, right? You want someone to come up with an idea because that helps you define in their mind what a successful cut is. But if they don't have an idea, if they're really lost and they just want guidance, like what's the best way for someone to come in with you with no preconceived notion to allow you to have creative freedom that isn't annoying because I know that's a big open-ended question. And when you're busy, someone coming in saying, I don't know, fix it, right? That kind of sucks. But if it's necessary and you need to get something done, but you don't know what, like what's the best way to communicate and work with you on that? You talk about like at that time, like they walk yeah. in your appointment. Yeah, they come in, they book the appointment. Yeah. And they come in and they say, Hey, I don't know what to do, but you're the professional and I just want to put my beard in your hands, make me look good. How do we figure it out? Like, what's the best way to ask you that? I, I love this. Like, people do this all the time. Really? So, like, look, I got super excited when you said it. Like, <laughs> so if you come into me, like, if you walked in today and you was like, yo, I hate everything that's going on. Yeah. This yeah. mess. What Don't do I do? I will literally sit there and say, like, my, my option for that person to word it correctly Hey, can you give me three selections of what you would like to do in my beard? Because I have no clue what I want to do, but I'm not happy with the current situation. So uh, that so, that so person, you to give them three options. Yeah, oh. so then that way you can sit there and be like, okay, I know I don't want to go short, so that's not an option I want him to do. So now you know he's not going to go short. Then you'd be like, okay, I don't want to keep the length. Then you're like, okay, all right, I don't want to keep the length on it, but I don't want to be up here. So yeah, I, I make it short. Yeah. I don't want to go boxy. You know, now you know, okay, so no squaring it off, no going too short, shorten mm -hmm. it up a little bit, and that kind of starts giving you somewhere to work. So then the next thing would be is, um, what's it called? Uh, not girth, but uh, like fullness of the beard. Yeah, mm -hmm. density. Like, do you like the shape of the fullness? Because, like, if you look at the shape of the fullness on, I hate this left right thing, if you face, like, face like their beard goes down, mm -hmm. people's beards go out and then around like that. Some people's beards on the back, back here, come out more than others. Like they, they do the, like the cat whisker thing. Yeah. So determining if you want weight, length, and shape, like a U shape, a point shape, a flat shape, that's how I usually go. And when people say, do what you want, me as a barber, I say, okay, I have three options for you. Do you Love like, that. do you like the, um, the fullness of the beard? Do you want that to be smaller to show more of a shape on your face? They say yes. I'm like, okay, noted. Okay, after that, do you are you okay with the length that is set? Mm, nah. Okay, would you be okay with here, 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 or here? And they're like, oh, let's try here. And I say, if it's too high in my head, and I think they might get mad or something when it's all you off, I say, let's try a little bit down here first, and then we'll work our way up every like two inches or something just to mm -hmm. see it. So then I thought it went from here to the length. Then my other question is, is how do you want it to be done? Do you want it to be flat? Do you want it to be U-shaped? Do you want it to be pointed? 
would you rather it go out and then go in that way like the triangle base like that not a flat one because a flat would go boom boom but right. a triangle base would be boom boom up to the face that way i call it mm-hmm. that i call it the dorito so <laughs> there's a couple of ways that if and if a barber's not asking this stuff don't go to that barber because they really don't care I was just gonna say Dan's kind of got something like that, right? He's kind of got the on both like the diamond shape, you know. He 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 has more like an oval kind of. So like his goes down and it like curves around. Mm-hmm. Yours has more like I like to call like the um, it's like a large Fu Manchu. Like you got the double shoe going on. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> but people don't that. understand that because people don't take like not people, but uh, barbers don't take the time to say. Why are you not feeling like that? If right, you right. ask why, you can figure it out. But here's the thing, too, like I was saying before, if you're not invested in the craft, you're not going to ask these questions. And if a barber is not willing to pit that 45 to an hour or 30 minutes that they're taking to do your hair to figure out why you want it done like that, and then what you're doing after to make sure it looks good for that occasion, I, I suggest you not even go there. Mm, yep. And, and you know what? I'll, I'll key in on that real quick too, because it's never, never good to burn bridges, never good to get bad press out there about yourself. But I am a super duper strong advocate for everyone out there that's taken the time to grow a beard to any length. If you go in somewhere and you've booked a beard trim, five minute or an hour long beard trim, whatever it might be, right? And you get 10 minutes into talking and it's not lining up, right? No pun intended. Yeah. It's not it's not going the right direction with you know that person. You are so much better off to pay that person for that time that you booked and excuse yourself and just say you don't think it's a good fit. Because yeah. I mean, like it is better to pay someone for their time, walk out and spend that money again when you get to somebody else that is right, than than spending the next six months trying to fix an issue for someone that you probably shouldn't be in the chair of. You know what I mean? That's I think that's key for people to know. It's like the the your your beard is worth more than the 40 bucks i promise it's okay to say no it, it is. is it is okay to say no like i i told dan about this one horror story that i had oh my god this <laughs> dude, I, I took every per- and this is me being a new barber like i'm like measuring the beard asking him where do you want me to stop and he says stop here and i'm like are you sure this is kind of short for a person that has a long beard cut his hair every- and the crazy part is i asked everybody in the shop to be like yo can y'all tell him this might be too short? And he said, yeah. And then he was like, nah, I know what I want. I'm a grown man. And then said that his girlfriend booked the appointment, but she didn't. And she broke up with him over the phone call because he was being a, a butthead on the phone and left him to pay for the bill and a beard that was chopped off. <laughs> mm. Mm. It was, she hit with a double whammy. I'm just sitting there like, yeah, you still got to pay. <laughs> yeah. You still got to pay. You're yeah. definitely still paying. Sorry yep. about all that. Especially um, when all your coworkers are like, yeah, that's exactly what he asked for. Yeah. And we all sat there and I'm just like, because he, like, when I, like, his beard was like to his knees. And I'm like, are you sure you want to go here? And he was like, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, dude, that's like a forearm different. <laughs> like, are you positive? And then when he did it, he's like, I just don't like it no more. I'm like, all right, man. I don't know what you want. <laughs> did he end up shaving the rest off, or did he keep it? I don't know. He walked out mad, yeah. paid, and was cussing everyone out. And I was just like, yeah. "Oh, sweet, cool guy." Then, no, I, yeah, this is a great, yeah. great story. Dude, yeah, right, right, right. Keep in touch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was ticked off because she dumped him on speaker while we were asking about the payment. Yeah, that ended up being a whole thing too, where she he was trying to get her to pay, and she's like, "Nah, I'm not even with him anymore." Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. So so I just think, man, I just think he was on trash from the beginning. So right, man. Yeah, we could talk barber stuff all day, but I need you guys to get to know other sides of Sean because he is such an interesting human. And thanks for all the kind comments, you guys. They they're really amazing, and and I appreciate them. So thank you guys for for making Sean feel so welcome here, just like I knew you guys would. And especially that last one, great question, Nick. And Sean's answer, I never never expected for it to to think about the options in laying those ones out. That was brilliant. But side quest here, you are a gamer. 
and you love anime. Let's chat about it. Tell me some some things. And uh, favorite game, favorite anime. Mm. Favorite game as of now, Hell Divers. If okay. you're not, if you're not doing your part to help Super Earth, it's treason. Don't okay. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> explain this game real quick because I am not a gamer, but hearing you talk about it, it sounds like the most interesting game of all time. And I'm not just blowing smoke. It sounds so fun. Nick, have you heard of this game? I have not. I'm oh, looking at just up. wait. Just oh, wait. This. All right. Break it down, Sean. <laughs> oh my look. Let, let me let, look. I'm gonna I'm gonna start off with a, a message I just got before I got on here. It says, oh, where is it? I said, hey. Have you logged on yet? Have you found out how we can add each other? So my friend Montel sent me the crying emoji. I love it here already. <laughs> now I just got to help you fight for democracy. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what game that has it. See, democracy. See, this is Scott. It's Scott's fight for democracy. <laughs> Put it this way. Imagine everyone on Earth said, hey, we're going to work together. We're not going to be on any more trash. The Russia, the United States, everyone's all bound together. And we get attacked by these bugs from Stormtrooper or uh, Star, what was it Star Trooper? That old movie? Oh, are you talking about? Uh, 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 yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Star? So that is the game. Starship Trooper, I think it is. Yeah. Star- so that's, that's basically the game in a nutshell. But then do this add in the Terminator. Oh. So now you're in one planet fighting against these people on the right and these people on the left who are trying to push into super earth and you got to go to each planet and fight and make sure that you either spread termicide to kill the bugs or fight off the uh automatons or whatever they call i call them the terminators to make sure they don't try to overrun super earth ah so So it's kind of sandwiched in the middle got it we we fight for our lives and it's collaborative. So most video games online, it's the people versus other people, right? Mm-hmm. This is, this all, is all the people humans versus the act- game. Actually everyone, together versus everyone, the game. Everyone in the world. So even y'all too, once I recruit y'all, <laughs> y'all versus Joel. And Joel is this uh trying to keep PG butthead that keeps adding <laughs> crap to the servers to try to stop us from spreading democracy to super earth and joel is the biggest peach head in the world because he <laughs> literally keeps adding the most incredible stuff that doesn't matter like how, like if you go like if you go on twitch and look at me gaming or if you look at just go to youtube the amount of democracy or <laughs> jesus the amount of gameplay that's on there is ridiculous like there is no community where you log into a game and you will freaking meet somebody arm wide open and it will hug you and say, let's get in here, brother, and bring out democracy. There's, there's no game like Call of Duty doesn't even do that. Right, because it's no. not a competition. It's collaboration. We're fighting for our lives. Oh, All right, what about anime? Favorite anime? And then also, if you want to touch a, a little bit, because uh, you grew up on it, right? It's got a special place in your heart. Yeah, and it's okay to... Yeah, it's okay to say fur- favorite current anime and also favorite anime that got you into it. That You can't ask someone just favorite anime. It's got to be current and foundational favorite. So favorite, uh, they, they're, all, they're all through the same. Current, active, and now. They're all through the same. And I don't know if someone categorized the second one as anime, but I did. So first it starts off with Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z because Goku literally gets beat down to a pulp. Like, Heck yeah, you really look at this man's win record; it ain't that good. I like, literally looked over last night when Dan was getting ready to say giveaway time, and I'm like, "Baby, he's getting ready to go Super Saiyan right now." <laughs> <laughs> they, like Goku don't got that many wins. Like, no, he right against Freeze. Passion like, of the comeback. Yeah, like it's the comeback king. Like that. That's what Goku like like puts out for me. Like Goku will literally take the most crappiest situation and be like who's the best one let's go and work himself up to be better yep. now um, he may be a horrible father and having his son get beat up by cell like that and yeah it, it, that was bad but build some abandonment issues you know yeah, he gave he gave poor gohan ptsd for the rest of his life P- gohan doesn't even turn super saiyan no more he turns into a beast because of what his dad did to him yeah yep exactly so, right that that's one thing 
that, that's one of my favorite animes. And then it also reminds me, like, just it just I faced a lot of stuff growing up as a kid, like not like jail and stuff, but just like just just as a child and just just growing through going through things. And I like I attach to it very well, especially like with seeing my sons and everything. And then also um, my next anime, it may sound crazy. I, I watched this now because a new series just came out on um, Netflix is Pokemon. Pokemon holds a a spot right in the back of my head to where if you ask me anything, I will blow down on the doors and answer whatever you want. Like I still go to Pokemon conventions and I'm the biggest, most dreaded, tattooed guy up in there. And people be like, oh, are you here for your kids? No. This no. Children. This is I me. I don't know anything I'm about this. I'm like, an expert. I'm, yes. <laughs> I'll show you how much of an expert I am. Yeah, our family's two passions are Pokemon and soccer. Literally. Oh yeah. Oh, you got I, I, I don't play. I don't play. I don't play when it comes to this. Like I love Pokemon. Like if you if you even look above me, I still have my starters. Where they at? Right there. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, look at that. So like Pokemon gave me that um sense of security and like that that want to be the best, just like how Goku was. Like Ash was late to everything. I'm not late to stuff. I, I can't do that. I get mm. trouble. But he would always like have to battle or overcome something. And like just watching Pokemon and being able to train your Pokemon and like even just like I don't know, it's a digital game, but I would bond with my Pokemon in that game. I mean, like if I had to pick my Pokemon in the PC, like it was such a struggle to decide if I wanted to pick Gengar in there over Hitmonlee. I'm like, I love you, man. Like I'll be back, but I just gotta use him for Pokemon League for right now. Like you don't <laughs> got <laughs> I'll be talking this game as a kid, and there's probably so many people that can relate. Favorite right. Pokemon run. And this uh, is like our final question. I wanna say Jesus. I like Hitmon Lee, but I'm a Ray Quaza type of guy. Like I, I like Pokemon and Fire Pokemon. So like Hitmon Lee, he just looks cool, but Ray Quaza or like Charizard or Blaziken. Those are my favorite ones. But the last anime I like is uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. Jujutsu Kaisen and Gojo. Everyone always tell me they remind me, or I remind them of Gojo and um, Sugura. I'll, I'll, let me show you real quick. Yeah, Maddox just drew, just drew this. All right, I'll show you here. So get this focused in for us. Yep. Now, it, now, the one I like is the all black Rayquaza, the Ooh, shiny. The shiny. The new new episodes. He he made a feature in it. I'm like, oh my god! Like I, I told I tell my clients, and I post this up once a month. I say, whoever buys me the luxurious, Pokemon, I will literally cut your hair for free for the rest of this year. Yep. It is three hundred dollars versus spending about like six hundred for the year. I will cut your hair for the rest of the year if you send me that Pokemon. And everyone be like, "Are you serious?" I'm like, "I'm so serious." And it, 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 I don't care how many come in. <laughs> yes, and <laughs> shout out awesome. to Nick and Jill. The pencils uh, he used for that were from them, and a cool little uh, Easter gift. And he has been, dude. You, you and Maddox are gonna have to get together and talk Pokemon with us because it's we're all in. I'll show you our collection. I mean, we got oh, we got man. it all. I got a closet. Like, if I open that closet next to me, like, there, like there's no clothes in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's all Pokemon. That's awesome. My that kids, is... they, they, they hate that they can't open that closet. Man. Well, Sean, you're not going to believe this, but it's been an hour already, which is <laughs> insane. And I know there's a there's a lot of people on here that have questions and want to get to know Sean more. Sean, <laughs> is Instagram a good place for people to find you and reach out to you? Yeah, Instagram is great. But the only thing is, like, I low-key kind of reply slow because... <laughs> Monday and Tuesday is my days to literally like get my mental together because barbershops don't open on Monday and I just do not cut it all on Tuesdays. So that'd be like the best time like talk. But after Wednesday to next Monday, like I am fully smashed. But I will answer and I will talk to everything. Like I'll like anyone that wants to ask me, even if it's anime related, or if you're trying to fight for democracy, let me know. <laughs> like I'll answer everything. But I, I am a little slow just because like I go from the Ohio State Stadium to the Crew Stadium to the shop, and then run it back and forth with the kids. So, like, mm -hmm. if you see a message pop up at twelve o'clock, it's probably between me spreading democracy and running and chugging a Red Bull. Man, yep. 
we will have you back as long as you want to come back. That's my promise that we got to have Greg back and I have you back and it, it will be an awesome time. Nick, any final words uh, for we get Sean out of here and get people off back to work? <laughs> no, man, this is fantastic. And I love it. The fact that we're actually having like a, we have like a portfolio now of, of what we've had Chris Cole on here with Cole yep. cuts, right? We got you on here. I think we got like a whole series that now that we're of, of people that we're going to dedicate to barbers. It'll be, uh, it'll, it'll be pretty cool. We'll have like the barber, you know, doctors orders hall of fame. I was going to uh, say, yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it, man. But no, thank you so much for coming on. This was great. And thanks for, you know, you have a different outlook on stuff than like uh, the other people we bring on here, obviously, especially different than like Chris or, you know, what you do as a barber is different than what he does. So it's really cool getting the perspective and just kind of hearing it from a different angle, but no man thank you for coming on and everyone that tuned in thanks for being here thanks for the support last night um it was a huge commands corner it was great and uh yeah next week remember time adjustment not one o'clock we're going 9 p.m eastern six pacific uh dan is gonna be remote i may or may not be remote we don't even know yet so uh tune in find out stay amazing as always awesome sean any any words for for the people out there um nothing look good for you, get laid spread democracy, democracy. Turn on the crew game watch the crew game so you can see me and dan yeah and then um oh hey one thing like if we do like, whenever we do another one let's talk about like beard and beard oils because like yeah i work with the beard oil side and i see so many like different beards now I'm, like working with you guys like it's it's actually refreshing like very refreshing Ooh. seeing that there are other entrepreneurs of the beard products so let's yeah. Oh, let's totally flip it. Let's flip it for the next one. You're going to amplify it for us out to your barber community and the people you know. And what we're going to do instead of concerns from us or things that we need from barbers and your feedback to it, how about you ask questions about beards? Like ask questions to the beard community and we can answer your questions about beards from a beardsman perspective instead of yours from a barber perspective. I'm down for that. Hey, oh, dude, yeah. let's do it. I like this. This is getting good. All right. Heck, yeah. We got a whole DVD going. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> right. Our, our people don't even know what that means. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody. We're going to get out of here. We'll see you 9 p.m. Eastern next week. It'll be all posted everywhere. Thank you once again for the kindness and the welcoming environment. I had an absolute blast today, even though it seemed like 10 minutes. But we're going to get going. Thank you, guys. Please 